8.05 is the time. 55 degrees. It's AM 650 KGAB Radio. My name is Glenn Woods. Thanks for joining me. It's a Friday. And in the studio with me, I say congratulations as we walk down the hallway as the Republican nominee for Governor of Wyoming, Mr. Mark Gordon. I've got some questions, and I'm going to open up the phones to your questions as well. So once again, congratulations on this. We were talking during the news break here that this means you have a lot of work to do. <laughs> You're not going to get a vacation here. First off, you got to run. you right. got to think about putting the team together. Right. you got to get ready for the next legislative session. So at some point, you're going to have to plan a vacation in here. So you just take a day or so off after all of this, right? Oh, well, uh, yeah, Glenn, our, our uh, anniversary is September 2nd. That's after the first Cowboy game. I think Jenny and I may take a little bit of time for ourselves. But, you know, in addition to that, I've also got to figure out the transition for the Treasurer's Office. Oh, that's right. So, yeah, okay. it's, it's a busy schedule. Well, let's take a look at uh, some of the things. Let's just get some of the controversy out of the way. One of them was, and we were just talking about with the audience last half hour, is so this group called Switch Wyoming comes in, and they were running robocalls and encouraging a lot of Democrats to jump over and vote in the Republican primary process and go ahead and jump back. And the, the messaging was, well, we have people like Foster Freeze who are endorsed by Donald Trump. They didn't want that. So why not go for the more moderate guy in Mark Gordon? And so because of that, a lot of, a lot of Democrats switched over, goes the story. And that's how you wound up with the nomination. And to that, to you, does that make you uncomfortable? Is that a problem? Uh, well, Glenn, let me say, I'm not going to throw into conservatism to anyone. I think you look at my uh, record on the slip board, the record for the state, it's the most conservative record of anybody that served on, on those boards. Now, um, it, you know, I think after elections, um, it's always tempting to blame somebody. Uh, and, and I think we had great quality candidates across the board. I think people often, often, People would say, gosh, I just wish we could put them all together and we have a phenomenal, phenomenal day. Okay. Well, then why do so many people see you then as the modern candidate instead of the conservative? Well, I, you know, I can't answer that question. Okay. I guess my view, Glenn, is that, uh, you know, people like to build up stories and, and they get a certain amount of momentum and, and there they go. Okay, so now... You've got to go for this transition at some point. Mm -hmm. Well, if, first of all, before we get to the transition, we have to take a look at uh, your race because you actually have two candidates you have to run against. Correct. Mary Throne was one. Rex Rammel, who was a Republican but stepped aside to the Constitution Party so he can go ahead and run against you. So in the coming campaign, strategy is what? Well, I think the strategy is to carry forward the message we had. It obviously worked. Uh, the message is about keeping government limited. I've been a Republican all my life. Uh, you know, one of the sort of myths that was uh, put out there was that somehow I'd switched from being a Democrat, which is absolute nonsense. I registered first and worked for Ford uh, at, for his election and so on and so forth, carried that forward. It's a party of small government closest to the people. And the messages we had is how do we get resources down to the local level, counties and towns? How do we make sure that it's easier and more efficient to do business in Wyoming, that we have local accountability for our regulations? Uh, how do we make sure we have a good education system and how do we make sure that we take care of health care? Uh, those okay. are the messages. We'll keep carrying that forward. I'm not pivoting. I'm not doing anything. This is, I grew up here. This is what I do. Same message you've always had. That's exactly right. Okay. So you step into the governor's office first time, and I was telling you my scenario. You <laughs> go visit Governor Mead with a, uh, you know, s some measuring tape and walk around talking to him while measuring the furniture and the drapes and so on would just be a great practical joke and if you do that get it on video for me but okay <laughs> so you get into office day one what do you do um you know i think day one uh is going to be right before the session so okay. you not you need to meet with leadership and you need to make sure uh, you know, this budget has already been set. It, pa right. it was passed. Uh, there's some changes that we can make. I'm going to make sure that I am fully conversant with, and, uh, you know, I've had some practice with this, so it's going to be a, a little bit easier for me than a lot of people. Um, you know, sit down and just kind of walk through, how do we make this session work? The first thing we've need, we need to do is make sure we don't end 
up with the impasse we had last year between mm -hmm. the Senate and the House. And that's going to take some real leadership. I've worked with the folks that are in leadership on both sides, both the ones that were in leadership and the ones that might be. Uh, and, and so I'm very optimistic about that. Set the tone. We started yesterday or day before yesterday with the Oversight Committee. Uh, President Eli Bebout and I were talking about how do we get in sync and how do we make this thing work. Yes, go grab your headphones right there. Okay. i got to go jump to the phones real quick. This is Glenn. Who's on with us? Hey, this is John Glenn. Yes, sir. So I um, had a question for uh, future governor-elect uh, Gordon, I hope. Um, uh, Mr. Gordon, if all you had to do was ask the Trump administration for a waiver from all of the private insurance requirements of the Affordable Care Act, and it would liberate us from all of those, would that be something you would be willing to do? Yeah, I want to look at a complete set of strategies there. That's possible one. Uh, you know, that's a little bit of what Butch Otter has done. Uh, but I think there are some other challenges that uh, – uh, other states have taken some novel approaches to. What I really want to do is make sure that our costs uh, locally are transparent, that people know what they're getting charged for. I think that helps uh, encourage competition, better practices, better performance, lowers our costs. We already have the ability to insure across state lines, but nobody wants to insure here because it's it's too expensive. Uh, so, uh, it, you know, that's part of the, the toolkit, and, and thank you for your question. Okay, Mike question then is you know me you know, big liberty kind of guy yeah i want to be able to pick my own insurance from whoever i want and you go bet. wherever i want to do it and just get out from any kind of government mandate whatsoever in other words i want my freedom back is there a wyoming plan in in your future or in our future through you or something like that well, I think that's uh, that's what the reform uh, that the Republicans did to the Affordable Care Act actually did, is it allowed for people to get insurance on specific conditions, yeah. and it allowed for people to build associations to be more competitive. So, Glenn, yes, I think there are. Okay, let's go back to the phones here. If you got a question for Mark Gordon, it's 632-6500. This is Glenn. Who's on with us? Hi, this is Maureen. Okay. And, Mr. Gordon, I have a question for you. Thank you. Your, your donations to Democrats, you know, a, a person isn't just a person. A person has morals. A person has an ideology. So when you, when you make a donation to a Democrat who part of their platform is a belief in abortion, uh, we have five adopted children, and I can't, uh, I, I can't even imagine not having any of those children in my family. How can you, if, if, if you believe in uh, life, how could you possibly make a donation to a Democrat knowing that if that person gets into office that he is for abortion, for killing of the most vulnerable uh, human beings here on earth? Uh, that's the one thing that, that uh, made my mind up not to vote for you, and I'd like for you to answer sure. morally. How can you? How could you make it? Okay, go ahead. Right. Well, thank you, Maureen. Um, first off, let me say that I am pro-life, and uh, my wife and I had uh, my first wife, who's passed away, uh, and I had real trouble having children, did the Catholic social services, uh, were working on to abortion, and then God blessed us with uh, two beautiful daughters. Um, and uh, I, that per life is incredibly precious to me. So I appreciate your comment about the, the five children. Um, the issue that I had with... Uh, with the Republican Party in the early 2000s is that our deficit went from five uh, trillion dollars to ten trillion dollars. Uh, we started talking as a party about big government conservatism. Uh, you know, I am a Republican because I believe in small government, I believe in personal responsibility, and I believe in government closest to the people. Uh, it seemed to me that our Republican Party, and particularly our Republican uh, administration had gone a little bit off track. Um, I was very upset about it. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have criticized me for that. Fair enough. Uh, it's what I did. Uh, it was not out of any other uh, desire than just to say, look, if we're a Republican Party, we need to stand for some things. And that is being responsible fisc fiscally, making sure the government's closest to the people, and being very conservative uh, in, in, our, in our values. Uh, so that was that. Was that. 
Mark Gordon is a Republican nominee for the governor of the state of Wyoming. Your questions, and I got a few more on the phone here. Hang on, guys, we'll get to you. It's AM 650 KGAB Radio. If your vehicle has got hail, there is good news at Spradley Bar Motors in Cheyenne. Spradley Bar will buy it or trade it or fix it. Bring your vehicle with hail as is to Spradley Bar Motors. Get it fixed or drive away in a new vehicle because Spradley Bar Motors will trade for it as is. All makes, all models. If your vehicle has hail, there is good news. You can sell it, trade it, or fix it at Spradley Bar Motors in Cheyenne or SpradleyBarCheyenne.com. Got a long list of tough jobs? Need a pickup and partner that can help you get the job done? Laramie GM Auto Center and Chevy Silverado are your partners for the long haul. Silverado offers strength and durability to help you get the job done right year after year. No matter the job, Laramie GM will work for you. We have a great lineup with trucks to fit every job, 3600 East Grand. Or shop online at www.laramiegm.com. Chevy, find new roads. The Cheyenne Symphony Orchestra cordially invites you to attend the 60th Annual Gala on Saturday, September 8th at Little America. The evening's festivities begin at 5 p.m. with cocktails and live music, followed by a delicious gourmet meal with silent and live auctions. Dance the night away to the rockabilly sounds of Dixie Leadfoot. RSVP by August 31st by calling 307-778-8561 or visit CheyenneSymphony.org. Uh, Hank called this morning, said that Johnson's dog got out of their old fence again. Thank goodness we had SWI put up our fence. Well, SWI does stand for Service with Integrity. They take pride in making things that last. They're SWI. T. Sweet. For residential, commercial, and industrial fencing and gate operators, see SWI in Cheyenne or online at SWIWyoming.com. At SWI, good neighbors make good fences. To join their team, apply online at SWIWyoming.com. Now at Menards, save big money on your next project with 11% off everything. Get a breath of fresh air with Larson Storm Doors. The Royal Oak Midview Storm Door features a retractable screen and is available in white or sandstone. Right now, just two hundred two ninety two after 11% off. Get 11% off everything now at Menards. Good through August 25th. Savings are a mail-in rebate. Some exclusions apply. See store for details. Save big money at Menards. To KGAB's Wyoming Wake Up with Glenn Woods on AM 650 KGAB. 817 is the time. In the studio with me is Mark Gordon. He's the Republican nominee for governor of the state of Wyoming. Your questions, 632 6500. This is Glenn. Who's on the phone with us? Hello. Yes, sir. You're on the air. Yeah, hey, this is Mike. First off, congratulations, uh, Mr. Gordon. I think what uh, put, put me in your uh, camp was your experience as the treasurer. So I guess uh, first thing, just a general comment, Ronald Reagan was once a Democrat, too. So I give you credit. You're going to do fine. But uh, what, as treasurer, what have you seen that would be your priorities as governor that need to be taken in a different direction? Uh, well, well, thank you for the call. And, and, and just to be clear, I've never been a Democrat. I've always been a Republican. But um, what, what I would uh, say that, has, that I've seen over the last uh, several years that we need to do, we need to make a really concerted effort to, uh, y you know, be able to trim our expenditures to make sure we come within our within our revenues. We've set the office up in the treasurer's office so that uh, Mr. Meyer, if he prevails, uh, will have a chance to do a, a better job of getting returns uh, that are more specific for the particular purposes of the portfolios. That should help returns. That should help make a little bit of a difference in the gap. Uh, you, you know, the platform that I that I ran on was to make our uh, our regular Regulations is simple and easy to understand, based on common sense and locally accountable uh, and dependable, so that uh, the energy industry that has supported us has a great chance to go forward. I'd also like to see us build on uh, value-added aspects of that, like we did up in uh, Gillette recently with Atlas Carbon, so that our revenues come up. But w we should use this opportunity and our savings to be able to realign government to make sure that uh, we don't overspend. And we may have to think a little bit about our capital projects uh, and, and put them on more of a schedule as opposed to let's get them done now. But thank you for your question. What about, and there's rumblings every so often, about uh, changing our tax structure, which 
I've even said that if we're so reliant on coal, mm. gas, and oil, then when the next bus happens and it's going to happen, then, well, we could wind up in a, in a problem again unless we diversify our tax structure. But then, of course, someone has to bring up state income tax, and I cringe at that idea. <laughs> Where are you on a state income tax? Well, uh, you know, Glenn, um, uh, first off, I oppose a state income tax. But more importantly, there's a constitutional provision that mm-hmm. says if we ever have an income tax, it can be written off against your uh, property and your sales tax. Okay. So so there really is no uh, – you know, that's, that's an argument that's kind of fun for the political – uh, spectrum, but unless somebody wants to go amend the Constitution to say mm-hmm. we'll take out that provision, uh, right. we aren't going to have we aren't going to have an income tax. I do think that uh, it's worth the conversation. We all know and we all recognize that our tax base is highly dependent on the mineral industry, uh, and that boom and bust cycle uh, is is problematic. I also think that uh, y- you know building small businesses and growing those out uh, is not the same kind of thing as trying to nail down this huge honking you know fifty uh, uh, thou- or fifty million dollar project that's going to hire everybody and pay mm-hmm. all our taxes. Um, I, you know those things are really h- tough to do. I I, I want to make sure we get an entrepreneurial spirit going here, and we don't burden the system. Back to the phones we go. This is Glenn. Who's on with us? Hi, this is John from Laramie. Yes, sir. Hey, I had a question for Mark. Um, the the website switchforwyoming.org used a picture of you on their website. I was just curious. Did they use that picture with or without your permission? You know, I don't know anything about the switch for Wyoming dot org. Uh, there's there's stuff in the public domain. Uh, nobody talked to us about uh, about any of that stuff. Um, I don't condone it. Uh, you know, I put out a statement uh, before the primary that said uh, all this stuff is is obnoxious. People of Wyoming just need to make their own choices. Um, I believe people of Wyoming did make their choices, uh, but uh, yeah, I don't have. A- any ideas about switch for Wyoming, and I, I certainly don't uh, condone any of that activity. Now I'm not. I, I hate math. Talk to my sister; she's a great accountant. I hate math, but so I looked at it and I thought th- there is still a tough row for you to hoe when you uh, finish this. I'll finish all the way until November because there were so many candidates running. You get 33 percent. Well, that's 67 percent of those Republicans out there that you still have to go out and convince that you're the guy. Sure. Yeah. So messaging for them have you, have you thought about what you need to say to those folks um w- well as i say i think we had good candidates there was yeah. a lot of continuity between all of the messaging there was a lot of just background noise and i remember early uh, really before uh, mr galliotis announced he and i had breakfast at the luxury diner and i said you you know what's what's going to happen here is there's a whole bunch of vermin that are lying in the weeds mm-hmm. that their job is to go out and try to Gin up and, and expose right. things, and so uh, y- y- you know, I I hope that the message of having smaller government, personal responsibility, um, making sure there's local accountability, and 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 you know, having the pro life stance and all those things, I hope those are conservative values and they resonate beyond. Um, y- y- you know, I know every candidate has their supporters, uh, and and I'm glad we had a, a contested race. Uh, I think it's good for the people of Wyoming. Um, y- you know, we had a fairly convincing victory nonetheless. Big field. People can do all the math they want to, um, but it's kind of like watching Seattle's last play. Mm. Uh, you know, boy, I wouldn't have called that pass, and, and yeah. we would have won the game, you know. Okay, well, let's go back to the phones here. This is Glenn. Who's on with us? Hi, Glenn. This is DJ. Yes. What you got for me? Uh, I wanted to ha- ask um, Gordon a question. Okay. Mr. Gordon. Um, congratulations, Mr. Gordon, on your primary win. Thank you, DJ. And, and should you prevail in November and the legislature passes a bill that would stop Election Day party switching, would you sign that? Sure. Sure. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Congratulations. Well, and then we had to we have to take a look at that what that would look like because that's been a big conversation I've had with the listeners over the you know, since Tuesday. Since right. so many people jumped over and jumped back. To me, it, that's either except for those people who jumped over permanently. Those people are jumping to in to influence the Republican primary, and then they jump back. That, to me, is dishonest and unethical. So is there a way that we can make sure that that 
doesn't happen, and I don't know what that looks like. Well, and and Glenn, you know, first first let let's put this in perspective. There there are a lot of people that are on the ballot. So mm -hmm. the assumption that the only reason that anybody would have switched over was for some mythical idea that I'm the most moderate candidate mm -hmm. is is a big presumption. There's a lot of people on the, in 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 the races. There are Democrats and there are Republicans. Uh, a lot of these county races, Johnson County, for instance, if you wanted to have something to do with the sheriff's race, you had to be a Republican. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, those are those are the the issues that I think w w in in. And I'll, I'll just be frank about this. The governor is, uh, you know, that's an important race. I don't diminish it at all. But having served as one of the other four electeds, having served on school boards, and believing in small government closest to the people, you know, I'm offended that people would say the only race that counts is, is the governor's race. Because, by God, the governor should be doing everything they should to get the, the power back to the people at the local level. That's where it should be. And, and you, you know, the other thing about this is let's not try to restrict people from their opportunity to vote. That's one of the things that the talk Phil talked about in, in his Democracy in America when he gave that wonderful explanation about how important it was our Constitution was a remarkable document that allowed the people to control government. And I, don't, I, I really do object to anybody who's, who's trying to figure out how they can maneuver the system uh, so that they can get there and manipulate it so that, that they can get the results they want. That's not what our country was built on. Mark Gordon's my guest. He's the Republican nominee for governor. Back to the phones I go. This is Glenn. Who's on with us? Good morning, uh, Treasurer Governor. How are you this morning? I'm fine. Thanks. Congratulations on your win. Thank you. I just wondered if uh, you might uh, let us know what your stance is on the Indow uh, program, and uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about that if you're for it, against it, et cetera, and I'll get off the line and listen. Thanks. He stole my question about <laughs> Indow. Where are you on the Indow program? Uh, sure. Well, thanks. I, I haven't had a chance to read the whole report. I know it got released yesterday. I saw the press reports on it. Um, you, you know, frankly, the budget was set for that, so we, we've got Endow for a year. I want to look and, and, and look at it very carefully uh, to, to see what the recommendations are from it. There are some, there's some particular areas uh, that, that, I, that, I, that I think need a little bit of a look uh, from my experience as treasurer, and I'll put it this way. Uh, anybody who keeps suggesting that we need to invest in local Wyoming companies, I absolutely agree agree that we need to have good Wyoming economic conditions. But having looked at these things, it usually show up with a return that is sub what we can get if we invest that money fairly and properly. Um, under, has to understand that's essentially the same as raising taxes. Because we made $900 million this year, more than, and, and about 580,000 people in the state, that's $1,500 in taxes. We did that by having a fully diverse diversified portfolio. And if you want a portion of that portfolio to return only a zero interest rate, you can see it's going to compromise our ability to get better returns. But having, uh, you, you know, I guess looking at that report uh, will be valuable. But the most, and what I ran on during this session or during this campaign was saying all of our economic development efforts, the whole bandwidth of those economic developments efforts need to be calibrated uh, and, and, and put in line so that they can be efficient, that we aren't duplicating services, and that we don't end up with a whole pile of government programs that do nothing for the private sector. Let's get to one last call I'm going to try to squeeze in. This is Glenn. Who's on the phone with us? Hey, Glenn. This is Fire Pit. Yes. Oh, I... Good. What you got for me, sir? What's your question? Well, I would just like to know. Uh, I know that you're a, a busy man, and uh, you probably need a little bit of time to relax, so I'd like to make sure I get a chance to invite you to uh, to the fire tonight. And uh, You're talking just, to me uh, or Mark Gordon? Uh, Mark, of course. Oh, okay, okay. I expect you to be there. Okay, uh, no, yeah, it's kind of a shoe in that I'm going to be there. <laughs> All right, the invitation is settled. Thanks. Uh, fire Pit Paul has... Nice house over on the uh, west side of town, just across from the Air Force Base entrance. Oh, nice. And he always has a bonfire every single Friday night. 
and people just kind of gather around, and he has homemade beer, and the cigars are lit, and we wow. solve all the world's problems. We don't do anything about it. We just solve all the world's problems. So. <laughs> all right, so from here, people can go ahead and find anything going to change on your website, any new information that's going people are going to find on social media from Mark Gordon from now uh, to November? Well, we keep running the effort. We're getting reorganized uh, to set up for the, for the general. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll be looking at everything, so okay. stay tuned. All right, between now and then, thanks for coming in. I appreciate your time. Thank Same you. Same 650 KGAB Radio, KGAB.com is where you find us. Now, if you missed this interview or if you'd like to see the whole thing because you missed part of it, it's on our Facebook page, but it's also going to be on our website with the whole story as well, including links. So just go to KGAB.com later today or KGAB Radio on Facebook. Coming up on 830. Fox News happens next. Look at sports and weather forecast, and we get back into it.